Hey everyone, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. And look, today I there's some news and some other stuff that I might get to later. Uh, there really wasn't uh, a, a big enough bevy of stories this morning uh, to worry about a Prime news. So instead, what I wanted to focus on, at least for this video, uh, is <sighs> something I hate talking about. Unfortunately, I feel like it's a conversation that needs to be had consistently. We, we've had this conversation in videos in the past, and we're about to go over it again. Uh, maybe because of Steam Deck existing, maybe that's maybe that's that feels feels like the current catalyst. Anyways, you know, we we had a big um, debate over the last day or so breakout on our Discord server uh, between a particular user who really enjoys the Steam Deck and you know other people who enjoy Switch and. Look, I'm not here to, to sit here and tell you which platform is better. I think they both have advantages and disadvantages and are going to please people in different ways. My thing isn't that the comparisons can't happen and that we can't have honest conversations about it, but oftentimes the conversations devolve into essentially you suck and you suck. You are a Sony pony. You are an Xbox. You are a Valve drone. You are a Nintendo drone. You are a fanboy. You can't see the horse before the tree or whatever that analogy is. I probably butchered it. I am so tired of seeing this. And you figure being a Nintendo channel, uh, we really wouldn't see a lot of this happening frequently within the community because... Most of us either, uh, if we don't own a Switch, we at least enjoy Nintendo IP, and we could sit back and just learn and enjoy all of that together. But on the other hand, there's this whole other spectrum to this where we are so driven, so inherently driven by personal gratification and justification that we end up not realizing that we might be actually hurting others simply by opening our mouths. It's a weird thing. Like if you bought a PlayStation 5 uh, and you're out there trash talking the Switch and trash talking Xbox and trash talking PC, why? What is your end goal in doing that? There are really two end goals I could see, and this goes for no matter what you're trashing if you're someone who does that. The end goals are either twofold. One, you're really trying to justify your purchase because you're not actually happy with it. So in order to become happier with your purchase, you need to put down people who play on other platforms. Laugh at the Switch for being weak. Laugh at the Steam Deck for using Linux for some ungodly reason. Like that's something you should laugh about. Laugh at, at Xbox for, oh, you don't even own your games. Game Pass. Like, look, laugh all you want. But chances are there's a high, you know a high likelihood that you're doing this because you're trying to justify your own purchase to yourself by gaining justification and gratification from others. Likewise, on the other spectrum, you may rush over to uh, places that highly praise PS5 to get more justification for your purchase by being around other people that are telling you how amazing PlayStation 5 is. Bottom line is, if you really, really thought the platform you were on was utterly amazing, would you feel like you need to go to other people's territory and trash talk them. I like in this sort of the PC versus Mac, right? Like PC versus Mac has been a thing for decades. And it, it would be kind of like Linus uh, from Linus Tech Tips who really loves PCs heading on over to say, I Justine, who's really into Macs and trash talking Macs because of his preference for PC. And he can provide a billion reasons for why he prefers PC, and I just think of a billion reasons for why she prefers Mac. There would be really no point to butting heads on it because it's all down to personal preference, use cases, and obviously uh, what they want to use. I, I, you know, it's kind of like Android versus iPhone. It's all personal preference. There's no point to running over to do that unless you feel insecure about your own purchasing decisions. Obviously, in this case, Linus doesn't feel insecure about his purchasing decisions. He also reviews Mac products and they, they rolled out a uh, Mac channel, which Linus rarely features on because he's not a Mac specialist. They hired somebody who is. So 
that's obviously a really out there comparison, but it, it, it's similar to us fan bases out here for these products. These multi-billion dollar companies don't need us defending them. I don't need to run over to, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm trying to think of like a PlayStation podcast. Like, I don't know, kind of funny PlayStation podcast that they have. I don't need to run over to PS I Love You and start ranting in the comments about how much PlayStation 5 sucks and Xbox Game Pass is better and Switch is like so much better. It's so portable. It has all the exclusive IP. Look, we're getting Zelda now. You guys are just begging for scraps. Your Forspoken just got delayed. Hello. Like, who cares? Who cares? Why do I feel like I need to justify my preferred platform by attacking another? Because maybe you actually don't feel great about the purchase you made, so you're looking for justification. The other reason is much more cynical. The other reason is extremely cynical. The other reason, reason is just unfortunately part of this world. You get joy out of laughing at others expense the unfortunate reality of human nature is we like to laugh at others pain if you can walk in with a steam deck into a switch conversation and basically show a bunch of fact-based information like frame rates and, and everything to to bad talk switch and you are probably laughing at how people who prefer Switch start defending, oh, I don't care about this, or I don't care about that, or blah, or whatever they're going to say. Uh, you might get a chuckle out of it because you're genuinely annoying them, right? Even if you're not going to change their opinion, you will enjoy the fact that you are annoying that person or that select group of people. And it, it's just... People get like this with my YouTube videos, right? We have people who come to run to my comments. There's probably someone in my comments right now uh, saying clickbait or bullshit or some other thing. Not because they ever watched my videos, uh, but because they get joy out of attempting to annoy me. And this is why some people hate that I respond or give any attention to it because I feel like I'm just giving those people exactly what they want. What most of you don't realize is, honestly, it, it, it took up 30 seconds of my day and I, I really don't give a, give a crap once the camera's off, once I walk away from the computer, it's not even in my mind. So it, it's interesting, you know, how, how people view that. But it's true that those people are attention seeking and uh, trying to get pleasure out of making other people feel worse. Or at least if they can't make them feel worse, annoying them and they get pleasure out of that. And I feel like all of this is at the core of console wars. There are things that are beneficial to competition. Having Sony and Xbox go at each other is how we ended up with what appears to be the excellent PlayStation 5 and the excellent Xbox Series X and Game Pass. All this really came together and Sony now with their, their new stuff they're doing with PlayStation Plus and, and, and like all of this came around from healthy competition. Healthy competition can breed really good things for all consumers. Switch, as an example, is now getting some competition here from Steam Deck. It's not a serious level of competition like PlayStation versus Xbox, where you're both selling tens of millions of units. But it is a, the sort of competition that's getting the sort of pub that Nintendo has probably noticed and obviously could grow with a Steam Deck 2 or a Steam Deck 3 down the line. And that's obviously going to give Nintendo a little bit of pause to at least think about how they approach future platforms. Because, hey, maybe some stuff they're doing is a good idea. Maybe some stuff they're doing isn't a good idea. And we can learn from that as well as learning from ourselves to create a better future platform. And then, you know, Steam Deck can learn from that and build it. Like it, it's healthy competition, right? Like that's, that's good for the market. But the fans arguing and bitching and complaining and whining and attacking each other and calling each other names, like none of that's actually healthy. And I want to just put this out there that I want us to really, really do something that maybe we were taught as kids. I don't know what your parents or your your guardians or your situation does that taught you as a kid, but I was always taught a couple of things, a couple, a couple of basic things, and I don't always abide by these, but I probably should more often. One of them, if you have nothing nice to say, just don't say anything at all. I think that's, you know. I think that's cool for kids. As adults, I think there are there are points to legit criticism and all that. But you don't have to be mean to be critical, right? Like that that 
be, being harsh and being critical don't have to be the exact same thing, right? Like, there's plenty of people who have given me a lot of constructive criticism over my videos that did it in a very respectful manner. And that's not being mean. So I guess there is a way uh, to, to do that without being mean. So maybe, maybe I shouldn't take it back. Whatever. Uh, that's, what, that's one thing I was taught when I was younger. Another thing that I was taught is think before you speak. We are inherently emotional people. We see something that gives us an instant emotional reaction and we go, man, I need to say something right now. Oh, Nate fumbled around and, 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 and called a, a thing the wrong device or called the wrong clock speeds or, or, or said the wrong game or, or got a fact wrong here. I need to instantly go to the comments and rage about it. Oh my gosh, I see Nintendo Switch Pro in the title of a video. My Lord, it's time for me to go rant and rave. Enough of this fucking bullshit. Blah, blah. Like, you're not thinking before you're typing that. You're giving an emotional response. Uh, what's interesting, like with the Switch Pro stuff, is I, I think uh, John from Spawnway put out maybe one of the best videos on, on the entire thing. He, he, you know, he, he calmly, one, one, he doesn't excessively cover it, but he calmly explained over the weekend, I think a couple days ago uh, on Saturday, why it's continuing to get coverage. And, and you know, he, he pretty much nailed it on the head. He, you know, one, obviously there's a lot of interest uh, in, in new technology. Two, uh, you know, analytic wise, it, it just makes too much sense. People are, are constantly seeking out and searching for that content. Uh, and, and, and in general, people just like looking forward to new things. They like speculating. They like they like conversations. They, they like talking about the unknown because, well, we could put more focus on the known. There's only so much you can talk about with known quantities because we already know, right? Like we already know uh, let's say everything we need to know about Kirby and the Forgotten Land. So let's say you want to you want to keep the conversation going about Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Well, at this point, to keep that conversation going, you would have to start doing things that are outside the box. Like, well, okay, let's start comparing Kirby and the Forgotten Land to, to something else, or let's start coming up with Kirby and the Forgotten Land theories. Once you've gotten to your conclusion, you beat the game 100 and it did whatever, uh, and, and, and you know talked about hey, you know maybe one time about what you liked about the game, what you disliked. After that, there really isn't much more to say because it's a known quantity beyond, hey, what's this? Future speculation if Kirby and the Forgotten Land can impact future Kirby games. So that is obviously, again, looking forward yet again. Like today, uh, before I decided to make this video, I had highly debated on doing something around Breath of the Wild 2. Uh, doing some speculation pieces around Breath of the Wild 2 because Breath of the Wild 2 slaps in the algorithm and, and gets a lot of views. And my lord, no one can ever say that I don't like talking about Zelda because I have a massive Zelda background in media. I clearly love talking about Zelda. So it kind of just fits everything. It hits on a hot button topic. It hits on high search results. It hits on viewers. And obviously it hits on my passion. So it's kind of a win, 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 win. But nothing I had to say was going to be new or unique. And I don't want to just regurgitate stuff that I've already said before. Ironically, I'm sitting here in this video about uh, console wars and regurgitating some similar points I've made in the past. Just we have another platform in the mix. However, the difference is it hasn't gotten better. I wouldn't feel the need to make this video if console warring had gotten better. And, and maybe I'm a fool to think it can actually get better. Maybe I'm a fool to think respect is something that we can give people that we don't know. Uh, maybe I'm a fool to think that we're going to somehow get rid of our narcissistic, um, self-pleasing ways in, in putting others down or annoying others. Maybe I'm a fool to think that any of this is possible. But I always want to think the best of people. And the best of people I can think of is a world where just maybe we show a little kindness, a little understanding, a little respect, and understand that some people are going to enjoy what they enjoy. I, I, I kind of look at it like this. You know, if you're someone, as an example, who wants to put down Switch, putting down Switch is a very common thing on the internet. Let's say you're someone who wants to put down the Nintendo Switch, call it weak, call it whatever, say, it, say it's full of shit, say it's bad for the industry, whatever you want to say. Would you, in fact, say that to a four-year-old playing a Switch? Let's say you walk into a room and uh, you see a little kid, just this little tiny kid 
you know, it could talk a little bit, can count, but you know, for the most part, it, it is probably getting one of their first early life experiences playing video games, and they're playing a Nintendo Switch. Would you look at that child and tell them, you're a piece of shit for playing that? You should be playing a PlayStation 5. You should be doing this. You should be doing that. You shut the fuck up. You, you know, Nintendo drone. Of course you wouldn't say that, because it's a little kid. At least I hope you wouldn't. You know, there's probably some sicko out there that would. Or for the most part, people that are saying, that are saying, doing this stuff, wouldn't say that to a four-year-old one you know you consider them as innocent they don't know any better they're just playing whatever their parents gave them yada 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 like there, there, there wouldn't be a lot of negative thoughts going on when you see that but yet because someone's older and you see that they're enjoying something like that we feel like now that you're older oh dude, you should know better should know you should know the switch sucks you should know it's a piece of crap you should know games on like crap you should know you should know you should know and here's the thing, they probably do know, and they enjoy it anyways. So that same respect you're going to give some innocent little child, why can't we afford that to adults who are just playing something and enjoying something that you don't? So I play games every week. I always play games every week. Because I am in, at the moment, three different Madden leagues. That's right, I play Madden. I've been playing Madden since I was a kid. I'm going to play Madden probably till the day I die. Or uh, if a new NFL game could take over. Like 2K, did, like 2K5 back in the day, I did play Madden 2005 or 2006 or whatever it was. But I, I, I played much more of, of NFL 2K5. But the point is, I'm probably going to play till the day I die. Right? It, it, it It's probably going to be... A game I played till the day I die. And almost everyone, every time I bring this up and talk about it, people say, you Madden, you this. Why do you play this stupid cash grab? You're the release. Blah, blah. Dude, I know about all the criticism. I'm not unaware that it's a stupid cash grab. I'm not unaware of all of the things that you're saying that are completely true. But you know what's also completely true? I enjoy it. I enjoy playing the game. And none of those things being true affect my joy enough to get me to stop playing. So yes, every day I play at least one game of Madden. It takes about 40 minutes of my day. I play one game of Madden in one of my leagues. Every day. Seven days a week. I don't always turn my Switch on every week. I've been turning on a bit more lately because I'm trying to finish off Shredder's Revenge and some others, but I don't always turn on my Switch every week. I don't always PC game every week. But I will play Madden on my Xbox Series S. And people are going to judge me for that. And they shouldn't. What I enjoy shouldn't impact what you enjoy. Respect each other. Attempt to love each other. I know it, uh, it can be really hard, but let's respect each other. And let's try to make the gaming online space, especially, much more friendly. It's kind of weird when I go to uh, some of these Madden leagues, right? And they find out that I'm a YouTuber because I use my, my main Nintendo Prime Discord account. So, like, Nintendo Prime, what's that? They look me up, they find out I'm a YouTuber. What I, what I find really interesting is some of these people that were, would be trash talking Switch and laughing at it. Uh, when they see my name, they look at my YouTube channel and suddenly their tone changes because they see I have a following. They see I might know what I'm doing. They see this guy with the Nintendo followings playing Xbox Switch or Xbox Madden. What, what's going on? They see that and they start to rethink their position of respect towards me. And here's the problem. They're giving me that respect because of all of you subscribing and watching my videos. They're not giving me that respect because I did anything to earn it. They're doing it because I'm, I guess, somewhat of a public figurehead. And they respect that without even knowing me. What if we could just give that level of respect to everyone? They don't need... You watching do not need a big social media following. I need to respect you. So if you respect me, cool. But let's respect each other as well. And if you don't respect me, also cool. 
then I don't know why you're watching this video. All right, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one.